Tonight I'm going to talk about the condition of salvation. The reason why we need to look into the truth of the God is because we would be we would find a good, a great, big principle. And sometimes without knowing it, we might misunderstand. So it is very important to understand the big picture. Adam and Eve ate the forbidden tree, the tree that God said, please do not eat it, because they chose something else than God himself. That is why the sin entered into this earth. God loves us more than his own life. Then our question would be, how can we be saved once again? In the past, I used to watch boxing. And then if you want to uh, fight against a certain uh, champion, then you have to pay, especially champion who has the biggest uh, title. For example, Manny Pacquiao game. The game fee is 270 million, the confrontation of the century. So for these two fighters, when they had a fight, Manny Pacquiao got 270 million. And the famous boxers in the world are very, very famous because the game fee is very expensive and very high. If they lost, and then if they want to fight once again, then they have to pay it again. We lost our battle in the first place. And if we want to fight against Satan, that is a second game, we have to pay for the price. How much would that be? It, it is required, the life of Jesus Christ. And Jesus died because he wanted to pay this price to save us. He promised that he will give us his own life to save us. And he asked us to fight against evil because I already paid everything for you. Genesis 3 verse 15, And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. He says, I, God, will put enmity between you and the woman. God said, I will put enmity between you and the woman because we already lost the game, the first game. In order for us to fight the second game, we absolutely need the more power than us from outside. If we want to win this game, the game against Satan, we absolutely, we must pay the price. So where can we find the price? Where is it? How much is it? It is Jesus, the life of Jesus. And we must win this game with the price of Jesus Christ. First Timothy 2 verse 5, For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. The only way to go to God is through Jesus Christ. There's no other way for us to be saved. This is the only way, the only way, so that we will not forget about this. Jesus actually represented a lamb. This is a sacrificial offering, and that is the principle for sacrificial sacrifice. 
because there is only one way for us to be saved, which is Jesus Christ. That is why for the last 4,000 years, we killed a lamb. Hebrews 7, verse 25. Therefore, he is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. The salvation is possible only through Christ. If we forget about it, then there's no, it is everything will be vain. When we want to be healed from any disease, if we want to be saved from any evil habits, we need Christ. We need to apply this principle in everything that we do. Do you remember this monkey? This is a red, green, columbus monkey. For example, there is no way of knowing how the Zenzibar red columbus monkeys ate charcoal as an antidote. They enjoy eating highly toxic mango or almond leaves. In addition, they also enjoy eating it from the debris of a human fire. These monkeys eat toxic mangoes or almond leaves. But how can they know that they can eat charcoal and then that can be used antidote for toxin? How do they know? Like thin mud, it neutralizes and absorbs poison, reducing the side effects of a poisonous food. Eating is not the only cure for animals. So charcoal, eating charcoal, neutralize the poison. But how do monkeys know about this? Do they have their own seminar? How do they know about this using charcoal? Somebody teaches monkeys. So for them to be out of the toxin, the animals need to eat charcoal. If we want to be saved from sin, we have to eat Jesus Christ. This is the best method, and this is the way that God made. If you want to be saved from sin, you definitely must need Jesus Christ. But sometimes the monkeys eat, and then they have another way. The capuchin monkeys pick leaves when they see the piper tree. That doesn't mean that they eat them. Actually, they take the leaves. Instead, they rub the leaves against their bodies. Why do they rub their skins? When they rub the leaves, the powerful antiseptic ingredients in them prevent skin diseases and prevent mosquito bites. How do they know about this? Isn't it so amazing? They take the leaves and they rub with them onto their skins and they prevent skin disease and it also helps them not to be bitten by mosquitoes. So whether they get toxic whether they get evil habits, God prepares everything for us to be saved from sin. As soon as Adam and sin committed a sin, God prepared a close. It is a quote, jacket. God prepared a lambskin. Genesis 3, verse 21. Also, for Adam and his wife, the Lord God made tunics of skin and clothed them. What kind of clothes? Yes, tunics of skin, lamb skin. Only through Christ, sin will be solved. Only through Christ, salvation is possible. And God doesn't want us to forget about this. And God prepared a sacrificial service, which is offered a lamb. Because God doesn't want us to forget about this. 
they kill the lamb, and the kill and the lamb represents Jesus Christ. Matthew 27, verse 51. Then, behold, the veil of the temple was torn into from top to bottom, and the earth quaked, and the rocks were split. And then, when Jesus died, this is this happened because the real came. And we don't need a shadow anymore. Only through Jesus, the salvation is possible. This is what God wanted to teach the Israelites. Leviticus 5 verse 6, And he shall bring his trespass offering to the Lord for his sin, which he has committed, a female from the flock, a lamb, or a kid of the goats, as a sin offering. So the priest shall make atonement for him concerning his sin. So how much would that be? You know, a, a lamb. What about those who did not have money to buy a lamb? And God even prepared for these poor people. Leviticus 5 verse 7. If he is not able to bring a lamb, then he shall bring to the Lord for his trespass which he has committed two turtle doves or two young pigeons, one as a sin offering and the other as a burnt offering. If anyone is so poor not to be able to buy a lamb, then he shall bring what? Just a little Dove. Even sometimes, you know what, people are so sick and then they are lame. What about their sins? Their sins will not be forgiven? No. Yes, it is. Leviticus 5 verse 11. But if he is not able to bring two turtle doves or two young pigeons, then he who sinned shall bring for his offering one-tenth of an ephah of a fine flour as a sin offering. He shall put no oil on it, nor shall he put frankincense on it, for it is a sin offering. If anyone cannot buy even a pigeon, but then he can just bring a tenth of an ephah of a fine flour. Does that mean that God loves to eat lamb and pigeon and he loves to eat flour? No. They represent something, which is Jesus Christ. Only through Christ, salvation is possible. This is what God provided for us. Whether they are rich, whether they are poor, absolutely everyone needs Jesus Christ. There is connection between heaven and the earth, which is Jesus Christ. When the Israelites went through the wilderness, they complained and murmured against God. And when God withdrew His protecting hands, snakes came and bite the Israelites. Sometimes one snake or ten snakes or many snakes, they are ready to die. There was the only one remedy for them to be healed. And actually it was a brazen serpent. Numbers 21 verses 8 and 9. The Lord said to Moses, make a snake and put it up on a pole. Anyone who is bitten can look at it and leave. So Moses made a bronze snake and put it up on a pole. Then when anyone was bitten by a snake and looked at the bronze snake, he lived. The remedy was provided only one way. They had brazen serpent. Serpent to represent a sin. Somebody actually went up to a pole and somebody had to die. For all the sins of the world. Anyone who look at it and leave. But guess what? This is a completely not scientific. Where is the remedy or medication in a pole? Even we are not take it, but uh, we are asked just to look at it. It doesn't make sense at all, even now. So many people come to this place, Seronam New Start Center, and then when they hear that, oh, you need to look at Jesus and then you will be healed, and they said, this is not scientific, and then it doesn't make sense. But guess what? The greatest science belongs to God. 
and the greatest science tells us, ask us to look up to Jesus. We need to know how to look up Jesus, which means we need to, as we think of the life of Jesus, as we think of Jesus himself, that is beholding Christ. especially the meaning of the cross. When we look at it, we will be healed. And we have the book, Call Upon God. So many people's testimonies, and then they all say, you know what, they are healed as they look up Jesus. Then how do we look up? It is not wise to look to ourselves and study our emotions. If we do this, the enemy will present difficulties and temptations that weaken faith and destroy courage. It says, do not look to ourselves, but look to Jesus. If we look at our feelings and emotions, we will be in danger. There was a woman who came to this place. She only weighed 40 kilograms. which means like, uh, you know, less than, what, um, 80 pounds. When she came, she looked like this. She was so thin. She tried many kinds of treatments. At last, she was about to die. She even could not eat. This is her testimony. I had abdominal pain for over a year. and my numbness and pain in my thigh got worse and worse. Although I had no problem in my heart, yet I suffered with the fast beating and short breath. I had no problem in my heart. I was extremely stressed out and worked a lot without knowing what it was. I worked very late. and it was fun to work, but I was ignorant about what was really going in my body, it actually got worse. Later my eyelids began to tremble and I could not sleep. Sometimes I couldn't sleep at all. Then I had fear for getting insomnia. Meanwhile my face was getting dark. and all my blood vessels in my eyes were popped up like the eyes of a rabbit. I went to a hospital for a checkup in December 2015. I was diagnosed with a liver tumor, adrenal tumor, with the adrenal gland issue. I took 50 tablets of Chinese medicine, hoping that it would help my blood circulation. Each acupuncture treatment took five hours, and I got it for several months. And I was told that I would be better after getting it for six months, but it didn't help me at all. A church member told me to drink a green juice and get a lemon enema because it is written in the Bible as God's method of healing. And also there was a church member who was recovered from a liver cancer and told me that I should meet God and change my diet. And I thought if it is God's way of healing, then I will follow it. So I really believed that it was God's method to heal me, but I faced a problem. I lost about 22 pounds, 10 kilograms, and my immunity got worse. I was hoping to regain my energy through some supplements, but I ended up being hospitalized due to another problem since I had a hard time to intake food. From one day, my walking became so unnatural and I had a hard time to walk. My body wouldn't move as I wished. I was advised to take magnesium for muscle tremors, but that symptom did not go away. A various symptom disappeared, but Various symptoms disappeared as I called upon Jesus. But it came back. Then I called upon Jesus again and disappeared. When I felt my head hurt and when my body was stiff, a certain voice came with it. Hold on, now I have a stiff neck. 
Will I have a problem in another area as well? When the stomach hurt, a thought also came. Will I have a problem in my stomach? Both the symptoms and thoughts, voices, come together. But when I call on Jesus, the symptoms and thoughts disappear. Whenever she had pain, she called upon Jesus. Symptoms went all away. When she came to this place for the first time, she took picture for herself. This is her body. Look at her. So thin. And this is her testimony once again. The process. There are some people who still remember me. When I came to the Seronam New Star Center, I used all the methods and treatments that the world could offer. But the result was that I completely destroyed my health. I was constantly looking for a way. That was my weakness. Obviously, God has given me an easy way. You start. This is the way that I should go. But I didn't follow that because it was too easy. God helped me to realize through my illness that all the things we have, such as our money, health, and energy, are supposed to be used for the benefits of others. And this is the way of God's wisdom. New Start is so easy. That's why she actually ignored it. Her knowledge, her knowledge, her wisdom, she thought they're higher than God's way. But God said, look up to a brazen serpent. She was completely recovered. Look at the difference. And this is a testimony what happened to her. I was told to look up, but I was so frustrated because I did not know what it really meant to look up. I was so frustrated. Then I fell down and then prayed to God to help me to get up again. All I need to do is to look up to Him who enables me to rise up. I am realizing a lot these days as I have a hard time to let Him do this work in me since I am a sinner. Just look up Jesus, but she said it was so hard. Why? Why? It is so hard because of our own old habits, because of our own tendency. Whenever feelings and emotions come to us, we accept them. And then Satan puts thoughts into us. Oh, nothing is possible with you. But the remedy is given to us. Look up. Look and live. Jesus has a place in his word. He will save all who come unto him. Though millions who need to be healed will reject His offer mercy, not one who trusts in His merits will be left to perish. Look and live. This is nothing to lose. As we just do our best and if nothing happens, we can go back to our life. But guess what? If we are healed as we look up, that is amazing thing that we can get. That is the best thing that we can get it. So when we made this uh, video, she was one of them who shared her testimony. Turning point of my recovery was the new start, especially the part of faith that I learned again brought me joy and peace into my life. I learned how to restore my body and mind. I'm very thankful. She looks so happy and she looks so healthy. She is healthy. So what happened? What did he eat or what kind of acupuncture did she get? No, nothing. She was healed as she looked Jesus Christ. Isaiah 45 verse 22. Look to me and be saved, all you ends of the earth, for I am God and there is no other. The science of the heaven 
is telling us look to God, but we are looking for something else. Let's uh, take a video clip. We humans can see from the long wavelength red, orange, yellow, green, and blue, to the short wavelength purple in the entire spectrum of light. However, insects perceive a color with a shorter wavelength, which is ultraviolet light. Now, let's look at what kind of information is contained in the ultraviolet rays detected by insects using a special camera. Now let's move from the world we see with our eyes to the world that insects see. Looking through the eyes of an insect, you can see the true purpose of the flower. To us, these petals can only be seen as a single color. However, in the eyes of insects that detect UV rays, the white circles will be visible because the ends of the petals are white. This is to draw attention to the insects centered on the white circle with the pollen. To our eyes, this flower looks a simple blue, but turns white when exposed to ultraviolet light. And the black lines are spreading out radially point to the center of the flower. To our eyes, this ordinary digitalis purpurea only appears to have a few random spots on the petals. But that's not all for insects. Maybe these white lines act as guidelines to guide insects. Organizations that are at the core have the most vivid hues. The honey fountain also glows very brightly. The same goes for pollen. Spring flowers that open their petals at all once at sunset attract nocturnal moths with the fluorescent pollen. This UV sensing ability is just one of the many ways insects and plants communicate. Flowers attract bees or insects. Flowers are, you know, actually um, shining lights to guide insects. Please come to us and then take a honey from us. And God has so many lights to attract us. Come to the cross so that you will live. I gave my life so that you can live. Please take this benefit. Your illness, your disease are given by Satan, but look to me so that you will live. But guess what? We are trusting our own knowledge. We don't trust the science of God. When we do, when we try to do it by our own efforts, we are having so much trouble. But God has so many directions for us to reach out Jesus. Galatians 6, verse 14. But God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world has been crucified to me, and I to the world. Last time when we had an English seminar, you know, we talked about how to be healed from various diseases, but this time we want to see how God came to this earth and tried to heal us and save us. This is so easy, but because we don't trust that, because we don't trust God, and then we are not actually getting this help. There's so many Bible verses in the Word of God that please look up to me and be healed. But guess what? We are thinking that I have to pay the penalties of sin even when God paid everything for us and that we abuse ourselves. We suffer 
from our own guilt feelings. And people think that, oh, he or she is a very religious person. Oh, she is such a nice Christian. But guess what? No. The humble person accepts what Jesus did for him. This is the humblest person. During the Reformation, so many people were killed and died. They were actually asked to believe in the power of a Catholic. But there was a monk who happened to read the Latin Bible, and the normal common people could not you know, read it. And this person, this monk, was so shocked as he read the Bible. He realized that our salvation was not based upon what we did. As he actually went up to the steps of Peter, and he was told, you know, the Pope has a power to forgive him his sins. And then suddenly he realized righteousness by faith. Especially Romans 1, 16 and 17, he repented. What is his name? Luther, Martin Luther. Romans 1, verse 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first, and also for the Greek. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, because it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. If we want to receive the jewels from God, we have to take it by our hand. When we take it, that God gives us the salvation. What about we have only one hand, we, we receive only one. What about two hands? Two. As much as we have a faith, we will have a abundant salvation power. What about those who have a little faith? But what about those who have a lot of faith? So faith is added up as much as we want from God. Romans 1 verse 17 For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Little faith, although we don't see it with our eyes, but there's power in even little faith. We try to look at, we try to, you know, see. Our faith will be increased from faith to faith, from little faith to big faith. There's only one way for us to be saved, only by through faith. During this dark reformation, they actually were not told that they were saved by faith, but they were told that they were saved purgatory. They have to pay something, they paid something, and then they will be saved. That's what they were told. It's not we are going to be saved as we give a lot of money, a lot of offerings to the church, or by doing many mission work. We are not saved. But if we believe that Jesus died for me, for us, for our sins, then salvation will be ours. This is the principle of salvation. Forgiveness, reconciliation with God, comes to us not as a reward for our works. It is not bestowed because of the merit of a sinful man, but it is a gift unto us. Having in the spotless righteousness of Christ is a foundation for bestowal. Not because we did something good, we are saved. No. Not because we give a lot of tithe and offerings. No. Only through Christ, by faith in Him. This is a certain flower, and then the fountain of honey fountain is very deep inside. And then, if anyone, any insect wants to take honey, it needs a long tongue. This flower does not provide the pollen, but provides honey. Because the honey is stored deep inside, 
it can be reached only by animals which have a long tongue. So this kind of a special insect, it has a long tongue. As you see in the picture, it has a long tongue. The hummingbird moth is that one. In order to eat the last drop of honey, the moth needs to extend its tongue as far as possible. In this process, the lower part of the moth is forced to rub the tip of stamen. At this time, the pollen on the lower part of the moth is also transferred to the carpel. The flower wants to share. The flower needs the moth, and then it has to have a long tongue. Without it, it cannot eat honey. If we want to be saved, we need to have this long tongue, which is a faith. No matter how much we offer, no matter how much we give money to the church, but our salvation is not secure. Only by faith in Christ. In everything, small stuff, to the big stuff. What about cancer? What about autoimmune disease? What about rheumatism disease? Everything will be healed through faith. Every time in the past, God has preserved His own people. From the time of Adam, God has given us the present truth. Adam will tell you, it is the seed of the woman that shall bruise the serpent's head. Ask Abraham, he will tell you, it is Melchizedek, king of Salem, king of peace. Jacob will tell you, he is a Shiloh of the tribe of Judah. Isaiah will tell you, Emmanuel, wonderful, counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Jeremiah will tell you, the branch of David, the Lord of our righteousness. Daniel will tell you, he is the Messiah. Hosea will tell you, he is the Lord God of hosts, the Lord is his memorial. John the Baptist will tell you, He is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. The great Jehovah has proclaimed from His throne, This is my beloved Son. We, His disciples, declare, This is Jesus, the Messiah, the Prince of Life, the Redeemer of the world. Every time, Every history, although people are different, but there's only one same truth. Salvation is possible only through Christ. What about this time, the time that we are living right now? We need Jesus to be saved. So people do not go to church just because they want to pay money, just because they want to review the Bible verses. No, because we get salvation by faith, through faith. There was one person who came to this place. This person has a problem in the brain because the small brain is shrinked. Because the small brain was weakened and getting smaller and smaller. This person had a hard time to walk. And his wife also was with him. When he came to this place, he thought, oh, this is something that, okay, I can just, you know, get rest. And, but we offer lectures, and he was listening. He was an alcoholic. And all the, like, you know, bars in certain area knows him because he was so popular in drinking with the woman. And he was rich. And sometimes he asked his wife to work for him. And 
even one time, not one time, he prepared his own meal. Somebody, his wife, somebody had to bring the meal for him. He never heard the Jesus Christ. As he listened to Jesus and his life, he was so inspired. Especially, he was so touched by the love of Jesus. You know, here we sing, and then we sometimes use, you know, body languages. But one day, he followed us as we sang songs. From that day, he became changed. From that day, he picked up his own plate, even though he was limping. He took his own plate and gave it to the cafeteria. And when his wife saw it, she began to cry and weep because it was the first time that he did for himself. From that day, he began to be recovered. He had a pancreatic cancer. He had a brain problem. Actually, he was told there was no possible possibility for him to recover. But guess what? He got up and began to walk. And he wrote this letter. I haven't heard anything about the Bible so far. But through this opportunity, I came to understand a little bit of the true meaning and profound contents of the Bible. I was amazed to see the mystery and perfection of the records and prophecies recorded in this detail at a time when there was no paper. In addition, the meaning of the ransom death which he chose the divine as a humanity on the cross, such as a true image and image of Jesus, and the parables of the Bible were really surprising. While seeing the cross of Jesus, who died while bleeding for sinners like me, I thought, wouldn't I have to go a little closer and play a really good part in the world? If he is in me and I live in Jesus, isn't that the one who will raise me up when I am tired? When I walk on the path of death, he will surely lead me on the path of life. From now on, I live by faith, looking only at God forever. I just blurred the pictures to, you know, um, save his identity. As you see the picture, he doesn't have any cane. He did not know Jesus at all. But as he was looking at Jesus, Jesus healed him. Is it possible? This is the best science. For our knowledge, pancreatic cancer, Brain tumor, brain problem, they're all impossible. But how come within a few days this person was healed? Because he began to look up Jesus. When Jesus came to this earth, he healed the lepers. There were 10 lepers. Luke 17, verses 16 through 18. And fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? He healed ten lepers, but only one came back and said thank you. But what about nine? And then Jesus was looking for nine lepers. Why was Jesus looking for? Why? Because he wanted to get money from the lepers? If we experience the salvation, the healing of Jesus, and when we remember that, God bless us more. But what if we just leave Jesus, you know, with this little blessing? There is much more. There's much, much more in Jesus. So when Jesus saw nine people did not come, he felt so sad. 
Luke 17, verse 19. And he said to him, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. He wanted to teach this lesson to the nine lepers. Jesus wanted to teach them, you need a tongue. You need this kind of a, you know, like a charcoal, not the remedy, but Jesus Christ. You need faith. If you believe in Jesus Christ, then your salvation will be for sure. Jesus wanted to teach this lesson to the nine lepers. Whenever we have problems, we can be, we can be healed through faith, which is by Jesus. When this lady came one time, you know, she looks so thin. I thought she's a maybe elementary school student. And I asked her, how old are you? And she said, oh, I'm over 30 years old. And I was so surprised. And I asked, how did you come to this Serenam New Star Center? I was born as an Adventist, a Christian. And then I was not interested at all, you know, in religion or in Christianity. But now, you know, I have many diseases. I'm very sick. And then, you know, my friend in our neighbor told me about this place, and I came. And I told her, from now on, you know, just, you know, try to be easy and feel at home and listen to the lectures. And then, you know, when she was in the lectures, she was so intently listening. Symptoms for me were dizziness and vomiting tinnitus, and fainting. Since the beginning of last year, these symptoms have appeared without notice and have been repeated frequently. When my dizziness got worse, I started vomiting, and as I started vomiting, what I ate was to no avail. As a result, I didn't want to eat, it, and it didn't help me, and I began to lose my weight. And in my ears, I couldn't feel comfortable, even when I was sitting or standing or lying down. How various kinds of machines roll with such a loud noise in my ears as if machines were running in a factory. And along with these symptoms, I began fainting. This fainting appears without notice. It happens when my eyes become blur and I feel heavy and feeling sinking, then I lost my consciousness. However, as you may well know, fainting can cause more injury than fainting itself because your head or body might bump into the ground or objects around you. Because of that risk, I went through several hospitals before I came to Seronam to heal this fainting symptom. I went to several hospitals in Seoul, and despite the costly test, only my precious blood was constantly being tested, and it was expensive, and the doctors could not find out about the cause of my illness. I was told by doctors that I am completely healthy. So as I struggled like this, I had to quit my job and stayed only at home. A couple who attended the same church strongly recommended me to come to Serona. The couple visited Serona before and shared with me about miracles that they saw at Serona. They told me how cancer patients are healed and even demon-possessed people are recovered. Through the lectures, the director taught us about where our thoughts come from, whether they are from God or from Satan. And he taught us in a very easy way to understand, and it came deep into my heart. So as I listened to the lectures, my heart became brighter, and I was able to laugh. And the more I realize what kind of love I'm receiving from God, the more I started to feel joyful. Now I'm cheerful, and I'm starting to feel alive again. And when it was a week since I came to Seronam, 
The symptoms of dizziness, vomiting, tinnitus, and fainting that I had before no longer appeared. And not only did these symptoms disappear, but also I could feel myself that my body is recovering in good health. And also God has reached out to me more than I wanted. He took away not only the big painful symptoms, but also the unnecessary thoughts I had. And there are probably a lot of women who have this pain. But I used to have a very severe menstrual pain. On the day my menstruation starts, I had to put warm water on my stomach and moan all day long. But he also, God also solved this menstrual pain. So I was able to go through this without any problem. As I came to Seronam and learned about the true God, I am very grateful to him. Just as a child is happy to see their parents, I am so happy now that my heart melts with the love that loves me infinitely. While I was here at Seronam, I had such a wonderful time, such as eating good vegetarian food, hiking, and spending time in the nature. But above all, I would say listening to lectures and knowing about the true God is the best thing happened to me. I believe that God used the director and his wife to teach us these wonderful messages about God for helping me to be healed. How was she healed? Only it took a week. Menstrual pain, tinnitus, hearing in her ears, hearing problem. But she was healed within a week. What happened? Today, I pray that will be yours. Victory will be yours. Our Heavenly Father, the world is so dark and so many people are suffering and are sick. And they have no idea where to find the light. You have sh shown the light to us. Due to the pandemic, we are suffering and we do not know what will happen after this pandemic. But Lord, you have created us. You create the whole universe and there is a loving God. It really comforts us. We want to learn the wisdom from God and we want to have an experimental knowledge through you. As we are being saved by you, we want to help others to know you. Especially these days, so many people are suffering in their mind and in their body and many temptations and trials. At this time, the way of method, I mean the way of healing from you will be revealed to many people. Help all of us to be with you. Although we have all different situations in a different world, different country, but we have one God. Where, wherever we are, help us to gain victories in Christ. Because you said there is only one way to be saved, which is through Christ Jesus. We want to go to heaven and meet our brothers and sisters in Christ. Please guide us. Thank you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.